In this video, we're going to look at the first part of our discussion of Hess's law, and that is properties of thermochemical equations. So to give a little context, in the last video, we looked at calorimetry, which was an experimental method for determining delta H. So in calorimetry, you run a reaction inside of a calorimeter, the temperature changes, and then you can calculate delta H from that temperature change. Now, there are going to be some reactions where you just can't do a calorimeter setup. For, what, for a whole multitude of reasons. It could be a variety of reasons. So in the next sequence of videos, in, with Hess's law and with standard enthalpies of formation, these are going to be non-experimental methods for determining a delta H for a reaction. So in essence, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be looking up values in tables and books and using those values of in, in tables and books to estimate a delta H um, based on, you know, theoretical principles. So the first part of Hess's law is to look at the properties of thermochemical equations. And be, it's because we're going to be learning how to tune and modulate thermochemical equations to come up with a delta H for some uh, unknown chemical reaction from, from a bunch of reactions that we do know information about. So the first thing we can do to a thermochemical equation is we can multiply it by a factor. So let's say, for example, um, we have 2NH3 gas goes to N2 gas plus 3H2 gas. And let's say the delta H for this is equal to 91.8 kilojoules. So what we remember is that uh, delta H is an extensive factor and it depends on how much of the reactants you have. So uh, in essence, delta H is proportional To the number of moles. So now let's say we multiplied this through by a factor. Let's say we took this entire reaction and multiplied it by 2. What would we have to do to delta H if we did that? So let's say that we had 4 NH3 gas goes to 2 N2 gas plus 6 H2 gas. So in essence we're taking the first one and multiplying it by 2. So if delta H is proportional to the number of moles and we double the number of moles, we're going to have to double delta, delta H. So the delta H for this reaction is going to be 183.6 kilojoules. So now we know what happens when we multiply through by a factor. So what happens if we flip a reaction? So let's say, for example, we took our 2NH3 gas and this goes to N2 gas plus 3H2 gas. Delta H is still 91.8 kilojoules. And now I want to multiply this through by minus 1, or flip it. And if I do that, what that's going to be is that's going to be 3H2 gas plus N2 gas gives 2NH3 gas. So in essence, we've flipped it around. Now we want to know what happens to delta H. Well, if the first one is an endothermic reaction, then when we flip it around, the endothermic reaction is going to become an exothermic reaction because now the heat that was uh, on the reactant side, so if you remember, this 2NH3, because the, the delta H is positive, is a reactant. So now that heat that was once a reactant now becomes a product. So the reaction is basically being flipped from endo to exothermic. So now this becomes minus 91.8 kilojoules. So we essentially we multiply delta H by minus 1. So these steps are going to be important because in Hess's law, we're going to be using these properties of thermochemical equations to manipulate uh, reaction steps to get us to a, a, a reaction that we're interested in.